All right, we're going to go over uh, the Torah portion today. <laughs> At least someone thinks it's cool. All right, it's, we're going to be in Torah portion by Yetze. It is the seventh reading in the book of Genesis. It starts at Genesis 28.10 and reads to 32.3. Vayetze means, and he went out. The title of this week's Torah portion comes from the very first verse of the reading, which says, then Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. So Jacob went out. If you will, go ahead and open up your Bible to Genesis 28.10. It's at the front of the book. Before we start, I'll give you a little backstory here. Jacob had received the blessing from his father Isaac, and this made Esau, his brother, very bitter and angry. He held a grudge against Jacob and was planning to kill him. Rebekah, their mother, had caught word of this and told Jacob that he must flee to Laban, her brother in Haran. So he did. Esau, at this point, had now married his third wife in an attempt to please Isaac, and Jacob had now left for Haran. So let's begin. Genesis 28, verse 10 through 12. Then Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He happened upon a certain place and spent the night there, for the sun had set. So he took one of the stones from the place and put it by his head and lay down in that place. He dreamed. All of a sudden, there was a stairway set up on the earth and its top reaching to the heavens. And behold, angels of God going up and down on it. Now, we're not going to get very far into this Torah portion because there's so much within this Torah portion that I can't cover it in 10 minutes. But I want to encourage you to go study this. Uh, there's a connection that I want you to see uh, that starts right from the beginning. Um, let's break it down a little bit. In verse 11, it says that Jacob took one of the stones and placed it by his head. Now, how many of y'all have heard this says he used it as a pillow? A lot of translations will say he's used it as a pillow. Do we really believe he used a rock or a stone as a pillow? Because it's very archaic, right? Like, how many people would grab a stone and use it as a pillow? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think Jacob did not use the rock as a pillow. The reason I bring this up is because I want you to see, I want, to, I want you to see the difference in interpretation and translation. If your Bible says that he used it as a pillow, then that is an interpretation. Someone thought that's what it meant, and that's why it's in there. It means that this is not a direct translation, but an interpretation. Every part of your Bible is there for a reason. Every detail has a purpose, and I believe that there's a prophetic message within verse 11. So as we look at it, I ask the question, why are we given the details that Jacob has taken this stone and placed it by his head and then goes to sleep? This stone, now let's, let's point out this stone. It's a large stone. It's not a pebble. It's not just a rock. We know that because later on uh, it says that Jacob set this stone up as a pillar. This stone is probably a couple of hundred pounds. So how many of you have a headboard on your bed? Hopefully all of y'all. Maybe not. Maybe we're still 13 and mattresses on the floor. Many of us just don't. Uh, ha- now, how many of y'all sleep at the foot of your beds? Many of us just don't do this because it would be very uncomfortable to sleep at the foot of your bed, unless your name is Corbin and Case and Crable, and then you're just all over the place. <laughs> so let's bring that back to Jacob. We have to remember that he is out in the wilderness and the desert, fully exposed to the elements. And so what he does is he takes that rock and sets it up as a headboard in order for it to make him feel more comfortable while he's sleeping. Now, there's a connection with this, okay? Let's flip to John 1, verse 51, and watch what Yeshua says here. And he says, Amen, amen, I tell you. You will see heaven open up and the angels of God going up and coming down on the Son of Man. So right here we see that Jesus quoted the very same verse that we see in verse 12 of Genesis 28. Do you believe that this verse just randomly popped in Yeshua's head? That there wasn't any significance to it? He just quoted this verse because he's trying to make the connection that the very same thing that happened with Jacob is going to happen with him. I want to further help you connect the dots here. The word stone in Hebrew 
could also mean son. And let me explain that. The word stone in Hebrew is eben. And the word son in Hebrew is ben. As in ben David or son of David. Now as we look at the word eben, has the, it has the very same three root letters as the word ben. They're interchangeable. So if this is the case, could Jesus be making the reference to the son? That he is the rock that Jacob has placed at his head to give him comfort and protection to sleeping in the desert. That the very first major marker of his journey is a rock that is placed at his head. And so what, what do we see happen right after he falls asleep? The ladder is shown coming down that has angels descending and ascending on it. What did Yeshua say in John 1? He said that I am the rock, and upon me there will be a ladder that will go from me to the heavens, and angels will go up and down from me. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. Amen. Jacob has started his journey, and the very first thing we see God do is begin with a rock. He begins with a message and a supernatural prophetic dream. I want to make that connection that just as Jacob is the eventual father of the 12 tribes of Israel and that he would start their journey into the wilderness and, and they would be introduced to their God and be given the commandments and the Torah and the spirit and all of these wonderful things, that Yeshua is prophetically making the connection that the next journey of the next 12 tribes from his disciples would begin the same exact way because he says they, they are going to have visions and old men will have dreams, and that you will do mightier things than I did. Now, what did Yeshua say to Peter? He said that upon this rock I will build my church. This has been misinterpreted at times, because the, the name Peter comes from the Greek word petros, which means rock or stone. But what Yeshua said there, he said, Peter, you're the little rock, and upon this rock... The, how the, the church will be built. Amen? We have to know the front of the book because if we don't, then we won't know that Messiah is called the rock. He is the rock of our salvation and he is the one that the whole house is built upon. So in closing, I want to say this. In order for Epic Life Church to have an impact on the kingdom of heaven, then our foundation must be built upon the rock that is Messiah Yeshua. Just as Jacob laid his head down at the stone, or the rock, we must do the same. We must continue to rest our head at the rock because if we lay our head, our minds, our hearts, and our emotions against anything else other than Yeshua, then it makes us vulnerable to the enemy. At the rock, no one else can speak into our ears. There's no other frequency that can come in between us and him. There's so much more within this Torah portion that I cannot get to today, but I want to encourage you to keep pressing in Keep pressing into his word. Keep pressing into his love. Keep laying your head at the rock. Amen? If y'all will, stand.